the instruments and support you need for your industry. Porosity holiday detectors, understanding brushes and coils. PCWI manufactures a vast range of brushware to suit these holiday detectors, including coils. This is the rolling pipeline brushes, easy to open, clip on the pipe and move along. This is a range of external half brushes. The coils are made to length, suitable for most pipeline sizes. As you can see here, pipeline coils, we make special lengths for certain different size pipes. We don't like to see them stretched on too far, so specials are made to order. We need to understand one thing. Once a pinhole has been tested and found, it chars and carbonizes. That means from the substrate you get a black char which goes to the top of the coating. So it is very easy to find the second time and on subsequent passes. It's the initial flaw that's hard to find. Well, depends on the voltage setting. If you've got low voltage settings, it's going to be harder to find, but very easy to find second time around. The coils we have are made of square section wire and definitely not a round wire. You can already see here a coil is stretched on a pipe. It can open up a lot and that can be very detrimental to the testing. If the pipeline coil is not tight enough, not enough stretch, you're going to have a sag at the bottom and a gap. That means this area is not going to be tested. You can see here the coil has been stretched too far. It's a little bit like putting a 12 inch coil on a 15 inch pipe. This is the end result. You can see here there's no gaps at the interface. This is the best way to have it but because the the coil itself has weight that means it is going to have to support its own weight hence you will most likely have small gaps there which is not something you really want this shows one against the other you can see on one side you have no gaps and the other side it's been stretched and there are larger gaps this is something you really don't want as you can imagine you have a weld although this is a simulated situation just to show you can see the gap either side of the weld there that area won't be tested for the simple reason that the gap is too large if you have high enough voltage setting you're going to get some testing there but otherwise that area will remain untested even with the pipe fitting correctly you're going to have a problem in that area the same as any lump or bump that is on the coating exterior where the coil rises up sharply you can have circumferential welds longitudinal welds this is the situation you're going to have when using coils you can see here the brushware is it falls into place much better on longitudinal welds the contact area is very small on a coil that's only there momentarily it may only be two millimeters and as it rolls along it actually increases over a bump so you want to be very careful as to how fast you move how much gap you've got by pulling the coil up too tight the brush as you can see the contact the area is much much larger it's there for longer so you have more chance of finding a flaw with a brush than you do with the coil the circumferential weld as you can see as you rise up over it whether it's a join in the coating or an overlap it actually lifts it up so you wind up with this gap that just doesn't get tested here once again showing the brush as it falls in you have thousands of small needle like wires that are actually falling into the gap so it's getting tested multiple times as the same on the longitudinal well. Now here we have some concept drawings. This is how I'd like to see a coil used during testing. You move at the rate of one meter every four seconds. Using coils that have gaps and don't sit all that well on the surface at times, it's the idea is that you push so far forward, you pull back and then you push further forward again and you continue doing this along the way with a possibility of even changing the position of the coil around the circumference of the pipe so as to make sure that you're fully tested. Once again, showing the longitude weld and the circumferential weld you can see the bristles fall into place it is much better testing this here is a small test that I've done many many times this has taken 12 kV to bridge this gap as you can see the wire is quite thin it's about 150 micron the spark leaves the end of the wire really easily rather than when you look at the spark coming off a coil which has taken 17 kV to bridge the gap you can see that it's taken a lot more voltage to leave the coil to go to the substrate considerably more 
just worth keeping. Testing is always better with brushware. It should be the default system. This is just some of the brushware that we manufacture, specials, etc. Now, as far as voltages go, maybe you need to prove that you can find the sort of flaws that you're looking for. If you drill a hole, for instance, and pass the coil over it or the brush over it, and you continually increase the voltage until you find it, then you can also reduce the coating thickness and keep passing the probe over it until you actually burn through. I mean, it depends really what you're looking for as to what you consider as a flaw. I mean, you can mechanically damage it and then run the coil over it and keep increasing the voltage until you ultimately find as a flaw. It's just something I think you... Uh, should really be looking at. So with the environmental issues today, no one really needs coating failure as you need to repair. Corroded pitted steel or leaking or ruptured pipelines are a disaster. It's a different world today than what it was a few years ago. Maybe it's time to do a little rethink on this porosity detection. PCWI, porosity holiday detector probes. We manufacture anything you require in this area. Earth leads, extensions, adapters, etc. Sales at pcwi.com.au